The sulfur industry is worth nearly $13 billion globally, but the workers who risk their lives to mine it in an active volcano make just $17 a day. <coughs> Why? Because there's a demand for this important ingredient in sugar, and that's a pretty decent wage for the area. If you look at other booming industries, you'll see the same trend. From collecting acai for our smoothie bowls to harvesting our table salt, people risk life, lung, and limb to make a buck in these billion-dollar industries. We journey around the world to see what it's like working some of the most dangerous jobs on the planet. In East Java, Indonesia, hundreds of miners face deadly smoke to extract sulfur, or devil's gold. Sulfur is used in everything from matches, fireworks, and gunpowder to detergent, paper, and batteries. It's what makes our sugar white. Working conditions inside Ijin Volcano are so dangerous, many miners don't live past 50 years old. Nama saya Mistar, saya sebagai penambang belirang di Kawa Ijen. Miners like Mistar carry up to 200 pounds of sulfur on their backs, up and down these steep cliffs. And Mistar's been doing it for 30 years. Nah, kalau saya bangun mas itu antara jam 1 atau jam 2. Jam segitu mereka keadaan keadaan sekarang itu rawan hujan, rawan longsor di kawahnya. This is as far as Mr. can go on his bike. There are no roads to the crater. So he has to walk the rest of the way. It's a two-mile hike up to the ridge of Ijin Volcano. He takes only his basket and a crowbar down into the thousand-foot deep crater. Here, he faces the volcano's extreme environment. The air can reach over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And he works near one of the world's most toxic volcano lakes. And there's the smoke. Kalau asap masuk dalam tubuh itu merasakan sesak, nyeri di hulu hati, sesak nyeri. The miners are freelance contractors, so they have to pay for their own gear, and many can't afford gas masks. Instead, they use handkerchiefs or towels dipped in water to keep the sulfur powder from sticking. Bau asap belirang itu sangat menyengat. Bau asam lagi kadang-kadang bau go seperti gorengan telur. Tapi kalau masuk dalam hidung atau mulut itu sesak. Ini mas batu ini mas. But the smoke from inside the volcano is crucial for sulfur production. This is how it works. When the super hot smoke hits the cooler air outside, it condenses liquid and drips off the pipe. As it solidifies and cools, the sulfur will turn yellow and miners can begin chipping off blocks. It's the sulfur's two colors that give it the name Devil's Gold. Once he fills his baskets, Mistar hoists them up on his shoulder to hike back. But that sulfur is not a light load. Kalau saya maksimalnya mikul, itu satu pikulan 70 kilo. That's about 154 pounds. Mistar himself weighs just 132. Nama punggung, ya pasti sakit mas di sini kalau berat. Kan kadang-kadang di pundaknya itu kan sampai rusak. Ngapal itu rusak, itu kadang ada tumbuh-tumbuhan yang seperti jerawat itu. Itu penyakitnya kalau orang mikul. They have to haul it up the steep walls of the crater. Langsung, naik, pelan-pelan. 
soalnya kalau nanti kerasa kerusu malah bahaya ke diri sendiri jadi jatuh meleset jatuh Once he reaches the rim of the crater, Mistar can transfer the sulfur to his trolley and begin the two miles back. Menimbangan langsung timbang. Nanti berapa dapat per kilonya selesai itu uh, diturunkan langsung dinaikkan mobil. The mining company pays on the weight of their loads. They get about nine cents per kilo. With two loads, Mistar can make seventeen dollars a day. At the end of the day, Mistar returns home to eat dinner with his family and rest. Ijin looms over them, a symbol of how Mistar provides for his family's lives, while it slowly takes his, a heavy weight to carry on his shoulders. India is one of the world's largest salt producers, and roughly a third of it comes from deep in this desert. Today, thousands of families live here, farming salt by hand. They're known as the Agarias, and they've been salt producers in this harsh environment for generations. Each year, they arrive at the dry, cracked land of the little run of Kutch in October. Patadia Gugabai and his wife carry everything they'll need to live in the desert for the next six months, including supplies to make their huts, clothes, farming tools, and all their food and water. અને અત્યારે હું રણમાં રહું છું કારણ કે આવા જવામાં તો મોંઘવારી પ્રમાણે જોવા જઈએ તો ઘણું ઓલું થઈ ગયું મોંઘવારી વધી ગઈ છે એટલે અહીં રણમાં રણમાં રહીએ છીએ ફર્સ્ટ ધે હેવ ટુ ફાઇન્ડ ધ કી ટુ ધીસ હોલ ઓપરેશન સોલ્ટી બ્રાઇન વોટર અંડરગ્રાઉન્ડ ધે ડિગ 30 ફીટ ઇનટુ ધ મડ ટુ ગેટ ટુ ઇટ ધ ફેમિલીઝ ધેન સેટ અપ ધીસ ગવર્નમેન્ટ સબસિડાઇઝ્ડ સોલર પેનલ્સ ધે વિલ પાવર ધ પમ્પ્સ ધેટ બ્રિંગ બ્રાઇન વોટર ટુ ધ સરફેસ Then the Agarias build the salt pans, these expansive salt flats. Yare ame ranma saruvat maavi kam karva. Yare a mati nu kava pata banavi ane yare bada roll thero pore. The roller helps them flatten out the earth. Wander gari jai roll thero ila jamin majud bani jai jamit charu bani. They'll make 10 to 20 pans all by hand. It's backbreaking work. Then the farmers will release the salty brine water from the wells. It flows between the pans. By the last pan, the water reaches the 24% salinity needed to form big salt crystals. Over the next few months, as the water evaporates, salt crystals form. Dantara khetwana lokhna vai, dantara hoy e pherawana. They start raking early each morning. to avoid the hottest part of the day. કે જો પહેલા તો મીઠું ઓછું હોય એટલે તો એક જણો ખેંચે એટલે આલે એટલે અને આ બીજા પછી વધી જાય ને મીઠું પછી એક થી દંતારો આલે ને પછી બે જણાને જ ખેંચવો પડે. But working here can be really dangerous. The life expectancy of a farmer is about 60 years because not only do they face extreme temperatures, they are dealing with subsoil brine which is highly acidic. and you also an exposure to that subsoil brine also comes with a lot of uh, problems in in skin mne to ae pehla to chamdi na rog thai chhe etle ek mahina lagi to ruj jno aave ane chamdi no rog hi pehlo ji karan ke jo pehla pehniya thi ne shuru thai many of the agariyas become blind from years of the bright sun reflecting off the white landscape And because they're so far from the nearest village, accessing medical care is often too expensive. Our nana jo aur the mitu sote gyu ne, they bangta tha, ane imne pagey jan ki phol ki dey ne, pasi mitha ma to ruja ved ne, anar ma pag pasi kai po kai po pasi tan diwas jiva, tan diwa pasi idet hogi. Despite these conditions, the Agarias live and work out here until spring, when the salt is finally ready. They harvest three times. The first produces the best quality salt. They leave in April, usually with over a thousand tons of salt. And most farmers we spoke to said that this season's market price for salt is between two and four dollars per ton. 
That means in a good year, a family will earn about $2,000 for months of grueling work. That's well below the poverty line. Most of the world's acai comes from deep in the Amazon rainforest. People here risk climbing 50-foot-high palm trees to harvest the fruit. Ela pode chegar lá em cima, no pegar do cacho, ela quebrar, no meio que ela é frágil. These berries have become one of the most popular so-called superfoods in the U.S., and they aren't cheap. One bowl can cost up to $15. And while the berry has exploded in popularity in recent decades, small farms like this haven't really been able to cash in. His family's farm is roughly 70 miles from Belang, the capital of the state of Pará, which grows more than 90% of the acai produced in Brazil. The only tool they use to climb is a single piece of rope called a piconha. They used to be made of leaves. Essa folha aqui, a gente pegava, torcia ela, aí passava por aqui, fazia isso para ver como como o tempo vai mudando, né? Today, Lucas' son Luiz Fernando will go up. Se tiver só pane que tiver maduro, não tá que vai parar. Pode subir, vai com cuidado. The trunks are so thin that climbers have to be lightweight. É perigoso sim. O cara tá lá em cima e o árvore quebrar. É arriscado o cara quebrar o braço, quebrar a pé. At the top, they swing from the tree to reach multiple bunches. Going down can be dangerous too, especially while carrying a large knife and holding an armful of branches. Dropping them could damage the fragile fruit. Graças a Deus eu nunca caí da saizeira. Quero que isso não aconteça comigo. Eu já caí três vezes da saizeira. Não me bati nenhuma vez, graças a Deus. Lucas and his family harvested 53 baskets like these in 2021, earning them an income of about $950. That's as little as 20 cents per pound. Meanwhile, a pound of processed acai sorbet can sell for $7 or more in the U.S. Part of the issue is that Lucas has to sell his acai as soon as possible because the fruit goes bad fast. That leaves farmers who don't have processing machines with little leverage to negotiate. Não tem empresa aqui na nossa comunidade. A gente vende para atravessador, para poder chegar na mão daquelas pessoas que vão beneficiar, que vão se dar bem. Merchants bring the acai to Belang by boat. It's a race against the clock to sell the fruit before it spoils, so markets run overnight. Some acai gets transported to processing facilities like North Acai. Every day, 22 tons of fruit are turned into frozen pulp, the acai that most people outside of Pará are familiar with. Indigenous people living in the Amazon have harvested and consumed acai for centuries, maybe even millennia. The Brazilian government estimates there are nearly 6,000 quilombola communities in the country. And a 2013 study found roughly 75% still lived in extreme poverty. Mas é uma, uma comunidade rica, né? A gente se diz assim pobre, mas se torna rico, né? De espírito. This isn't snow. It's limestone. And miners risk their lives to carve it out of the white quarries of Egypt. The valuable rock is at the center of a huge industry. And it's used to make everything from cement and glass to plastic and tiles. It's even what the Great Pyramids were made out of. But digging up and cutting these precious blocks is really dangerous. 
For these guys, each day starts in Nina City at dawn. And this is where the danger begins. These trucks aren't meant for passengers. Workers have gotten injured from falls along the winding journey. The trip to the mountain takes about 40 minutes. Then it's time to get suited up. Since these miners are freelancers, they have to buy their own protective gear. Often, homemade cloth masks, gloves, and sunglasses are all miners have to shield them. They grab their tools and descend into the pit. First, miners have to set up these two rails. Two separate machines roll along the tracks. They slice the stone into perfect cuboids beneath. The machines move quickly. They're really heavy and they're loud. Workers shout at each other to warn the machines are nearby. Because the real hazard is those saws. A quick step is all that separates miners from razor sharp blades. Miners are responsible for fixing the machines when they break and sharpening the blades by hand. That's also risky work. The cutting machines used to have coverings, but they fell off years ago. Now the blades are exposed. As the machines cut stone, they kick up rocks in a haunting white cloud of limestone powder. If there's no wind, miners disappear in it like ghosts. It's easy to inhale the fine dust. And if they breathe it long enough, it can cause a lung condition called silicosis. Injuries, sickness, and death in these mines are widely reported, but there aren't any official numbers. At one point, the life expectancy here was just 45 years old. Zaki says many mine owners will offer under $200 by way of workers' comp. Perfectly cut stones that haven't been sold yet get stacked. But these blocks have already been purchased. So miners throw them straight into the truck. And they have perfect aim. If they're lucky, they might get a $3 stipend for food and tea on top of their $6 daily wage. These men are climbing slippery limestone cliffs, risking falls of up to 100 feet. <laughs> They're looking for a rare nest made of bird saliva that's found inside caves across Southeast Asia. In the Philippines, the harvesters are known as bushadors. For centuries, Alvin Villarendo's family have put their lives on the line to gather swiftlet nests. Just two pounds is worth $2,900. And it's used to make a soup that locals believe is good for your health. Alvin and his crew gather at Bangalan Point on Mighty Git Island. <laughs> and they're heading to Nabat Island. It's one of the 7,000 islands that make up the Philippines, and it can only be reached by boat. They get off the boat and walk barefoot across the slippery and sharp rocks. 
They make the ladder as they're climbing up. They tighten the bamboo with rope. Then they attach a piece of wood called kalitang to the ladder. Yung pinakamahirap gawin talaga dyan, yung pag-akyat. Siyempre, hindi mo pa alam kung maganda yung pagkasabit ng kalitang. Ba, sinabit. Tapos, hindi mo, hindi sure kung anong pagkalagay nun doon. Kaya medyo sa pag-akyat mo, medyo alanganin ka pa, baka biglang matanggal. The stakes are high. Tingin namin sa mga tao sa baba na mga kasama namin, parang mga bata na lang. Tinitignan ko yung, ano na, sabi ko, kunting pagkakamali lang talaga. Pag nalaglag, puro bato yung mababagsakan mo. Pag hindi nasa kondisyon yung katawan, huwag natin piliting umakyat kasi siyempre buhay natin yung nakataya dyan. But advanced bushadors like him sometimes use little to no support. Only their hands and feet. This is the most dangerous way to climb. In the regional language, it's known as kagang kagang lang, or like a crab. Kasi may mga bato na pag hinawakan mo, bigla na lang buwabagsak. Alvin has had some close calls, and he dislocated his shoulder once. Pag akyat ko sa butas, medyo maliit yung butas. Yung daan-daan akong bumaba sa kawayan, isang kami na lang inawak ko sa kawayan. Yun na, uminto na talaga ako sa pag-akyat ng, ano, ng, sa mga matataas. Nabat Island is completely remote. If there's an emergency, there's no way to quickly get help. Ang dami na rin na diskrasya na sa pag-akyat. Bayaw ko na isa na nalaglag, patay din. Gail! After spotting the nests, Alvin uses a spray bottle filled with water to loosen them. They are then gently peeled away from the cave walls. Yung ibon nun, sa pagwalong piraso yung pugad, ibig sabihin yung ibon niya ay 16. Si partner lagi yan, isang pugad, dalawang ibon ka kagad yan. Magpartner kagad yan yung, yung isang pugad. Siguro naman mayroon katulad din ng tao pag <laughs> may poor ibon. <laughs> After harvesting, the bushadors clean them to remove any feathers or branches. Then they divide them by their hardness and color. The local city hall buys the nests from the bushadors at a regulated price and sells them to private customers around the world. They are the main ingredient in bird's nest soup, a delicacy in China and around the world. A bowl can cost as much as a hundred dollars. Sa tingin ko yung kumakain lang ng soap ng balin sa sayaw, yung mga mayayaman lang talaga. Yung mga katulad natin, medyo parang wala na lang. <laughs> In recent years, demand for the nests and bird's nest soup has gone up. Alvin is finally home after two days of hunting for nests. The season is almost over. Kailangan ko ng pagiging isang busyador. Yun na lang eh, kasi hindi naman ako nakapag-aaral, hindi ako nakapagtapos ng pag-aaral. Tapos, unang-una, ayaw ko rin magtrabaho na malayo sa pamilya ko kasi mas, ano na eh, kumikita na rin ako dito sa pagiging busyador. You just watched excerpts from some of our big business and risky business stories. Click here to watch the rest of these videos.